Welcome to Practical Home Projects. Today we're going to talk about your main electrical panel, sometimes also called the circuit breaker box. If you guys like the content today, we'd really appreciate a like and subscribe, and then leave any comments you have in the section down below. Your main panel is going to be located in an accessible location in your house, usually near the front door, or maybe inside your garage, and most homeowners only access it when they need to fix a tripped breaker. So let's go ahead and open ours up. There are several different brands of main panel. So this one is made by GE. You'll find Square D by Schneider is pretty popular. Eaton or Siemens or Leviton are also uh, other popular options. So those should all be UL certified and plenty safe to go. Um, they all pretty much work the exact same, but you'll have to make extra sure if you're ever replacing parts to get the one that matches your brand specifically. And actually, if you're replacing a breaker, there should be a little label inside that says the breakers specifically that can go inside that panel. So you'll notice that I have each of my breakers labeled right next to the breaker itself. For me, that's a little bit more logical and easy to see exactly what it is. And then also, if they get moved around, I can easily move that label around. Traditionally, you would label them right here on this pad, which has a number that correlates to each breaker. I know that over time, if you've had some electrical projects done, sometimes this is no longer accurate. So before you do any electrical work, you have to double check to make sure that your labels are all correct. So let's say you're in your house, you're using the vacuum cleaner, an air purifier, maybe you had a PC running as well, and then the power shuts off to just those items. That means you probably overloaded one of your breakers. So what you're going to do is you're going to come find this panel and you're going to look for the breaker that's out of line. So all of them should be flipped one direction and then there's one that's probably going to be a little bit out of line. So what you're going to do is you're going to flip it all the way off and that resets the spring inside the breaker and then flip it all the way back on. And now that power should be working properly again. If you're in your house and the breaker trips for no reason at all and you don't have any high energy appliances, that could mean that you have a short somewhere. That could be in an appliance, like maybe you have an electric blanket or something, or that could be in the walls, like maybe somebody hit a nail through a wire in a wall, and that's a little bit more dangerous. It could also be due to the fact that the breaker itself is getting faulty. So if that just happens once in a blue moon, maybe you reset it, but if it happens repeatedly to the same breaker, then you probably need to investigate further. In order to better understand how the main panel works, we're going to go ahead and take this cover off. But before we do, realize that working inside the panel can be extremely dangerous. So make sure that you're aware of all the systems going on inside. And if you have any questions, please consult an electrician or a licensed person in your area to help you. You'll see that these screws actually are not just standard Phillips screws. These are what are called Robinson bit screws. Um, they're a little bit more durable, but you can actually still remove them with just a flathead screwdriver. So now we've got the cover off. I know this looks a little bit intimidating, but we're going to go through it one step at a time, starting with the power coming off from the street into your house. So I have three wires coming in from the street, and they're coming in from the bottom of my panel. It's possible that you have power coming in from the top of your panel if you have above ground lines, and your system is going to work the exact same, but just flipped upside down. Let's start with this wire over here. This is the neutral wire coming in from the service. So it's bolted to this metal bar on the side, and we call this bar the neutral bus. So on my panel, I have two of these buses, one on each side, and yours also might be kind of bunched together in the middle, and in the main panel, they're going to be electrically connected with a bar as well. I've also got my grounding system connected to that bar, so those are my grounding rods outside as well as the metal pipes in my house. I like to think of the neutral as sort of the zero voltage phase. These other two wires are the live, or the hot wires, coming into my panel that are bringing power to everything else. So you'll see they're connected to this main breaker. So this main breaker is how you shut off power to everything else in your house. However, you'll notice that there's a plastic cover over the screws that hold these wires, and that's because even with the main breaker off, these screws are still electrically active. Each one of these wires is 120 volts relative to our neutral phase and they're 240 volts relative to each other. So I consider this like an A phase and a B phase, and you'll see there's one that goes up the right side and one that goes up the left side, but that does not mean that the breakers on the right side are all bonded to the phase on the right side. Let's dive in up top. So we have our A phase and our B phase coming up the middle of this panel. 
and you'll see that each one actually has this metal protrusion going dead center and that's so that our breakers can connect to it from either side. So you can clip onto it from the right or the left and actually the center is the only place that these are electrically connected. The other half is just connected to this metal retaining bracket. So the whole reason that we have this alternating phase going on inside of our panel is so that we can use these double pole breakers. So these actually clamp on to both phases at the same time. So you have that positive 120 and the other 120 for a total of 240 volts. So you'll see these for your heavier energy use appliances like a stove or a water heater. Your panel may have a few of these half size breakers. So these are totally legal and they function just the same as a normal breaker, but they take up half the space of a normal one. Electricians often like to use these half size breakers because you can fit two of them in the space of one and they'll put these in when the panel is completely filled and there's not enough spaces. Another option is to expand your whole panel and get a larger panel so you can fit more breakers and you can use the full size which might be an added benefit because the AFCI and GFCI breakers only come in the full sizes. You may be wondering why we have to deal with the hassle of these breakers in the first place why we can't just connect our wires directly to that hot phase. The breakers perform a very important safety feature. So you'll see each breaker has a number on it. So that number is the total number of amps that that breaker is capable of supporting. So if let's say you have a breaker that's rated for 20 amps, then once you try to pull more than 20 amps through that breaker, there's a tiny piece of metal that will deflect and flip the breaker off. And that protects not only the breaker itself, that protects all the wires and the appliances connected to that circuit. Your panel may also have AFCI breakers, which help to protect against fires from arc faults, or GFCI breakers, which help to protect against ground faults, which could be electrocution hazards. If you want to learn more about arc fault protection, check out our video above. The higher the current rating of the breaker, the more power you might be pulling through that circuit, which means the thicker wire you're going to need to use. So check out this table that we have, which is just a rough guideline of how, what gauge wire you need to use for different size circuits. And you can use those wire sizes, whether using the 120 volt phase or the 240 volt phase. A lot of the reason that you use the two phase uh, breakers for your water heater or for your oven is because when you have twice the number of voltage, you can pull twice the number of watts for the same amount of current. So if you're ever buying a house, your inspector is actually going to check the inside of your panel. And you can do this inspection yourself. So here's a few things that you might want to look for. So you want to make sure that you only have one cable coming through each penetration. Each one of those cables needs to have a clamp on it and that secures it in place so that it can't be tugged out and possibly come disconnected. And you also want to make sure that you have the sheathing extending into the main panel a little bit. You don't want just loose wires coming in because that could indicate that there's damage down below. You also want to check to make sure that you don't have any debris sitting down here. Perhaps if somebody was doing drywall work or construction, some paper or wood chips could have fallen in here and that's a fire hazard and that's also a code violation. Another thing you might want to look out for in your panel is to make sure that there aren't two black wires going into a single breaker. That's not allowed by code. You are allowed to have splices inside of your main electrical panel. Just make sure if you use a pigtail such as this one that you have an approved cap. And if this is a live wire, make sure there is no exposed metal. Some examples of projects you might want to do in the future are changing out a faulty breaker that's maybe tripping on you with no reason. You might want to upgrade an old breaker to an AFCI or GFCI breaker for some added protection. You might even want to add a new circuit to your house. Let's say you're doing a kitchen renovation or you have a new appliance coming in. You might even want to add a new sub panel in your house, maybe to your garage or maybe to your shed. And you can check out our shed sub panel video here in the comments. Before you do any of these projects, make sure you understand the local code in your area. Make sure you understand electricity and always consult an electrician and your local jurisdiction for help. Thank you for watching our video today, guys. If you like what you saw, please give us a like and subscribe. And then if you have any further questions, put that down in the comment section below. See ya.